the new Proverbs Ten Commandments, the guide for humankind in the 21st century. Religion considers the Ten Commandments from a theological, testament, covenant, or doctrinal perspective. What about the practical? Everyone asks the theological question, are the Ten Commandments still valid today? Here's what we should be asking. Why did God generate and give humans the Ten Commandments? What's His perspective? How are the Ten Commandments relevant to improved mental health today? This is Chapter 21 from the book Transform Your Mind, Upgrade Your Life, from The Explanation with Sam Kneller. Short History of the Commandments They were present from the Garden of Eden, through Cain, Noah, Nimrod, Abraham, and his descendants. God formalized the Ten Commandments to the twelve-tribe nation of Israel and the mixed multitude on Mount Sinai at the Exodus. Forty years later, in Deuteronomy, Moses reiterated God's Ten Commandments and many others as the specific recipe for living prosperously and healthily in body and mind in the Promised Land. Then there followed umpteen ups and downs as the leadership and people waxed and waned with regard to the Ten Commandments. When they obeyed, blessings ensued, while disobedience brought hardship and catastrophe, until finally disobedience culminated in God allowing the entire northern ten tribes of Israel to be taken captive by the Assyrians around 720 BC, and about 120 years later, the same calamity on the two remaining tribes, Judah and Benjamin, along with the destruction of the temple in Jerusalem. Solomon published wisdom books. During this tumultuous period, there was one brief glorious period of righteousness. King David and the beginning of his son's reign, Solomon. One of the highlights of that era is Solomon's prayer to God. 1 Kings 3 verse 7 And now, O Lord my God, you have made your servant king instead of David my father, and I am but a little child. I know not how to go out or come in. And your servant is in the midst of your people, which you have chosen, a great people that cannot be numbered nor counted for multitude. Give therefore your servant an understanding, that Strong's 8085, meaning hearing, obedient, and publish. Give your servant an understanding heart to judge. Strong's H8199, to reason, to rule, to judge your people, that I may discern. Strong's H995, that I, Solomon, may discern between good and bad. Sam's comment, the tree of good and evil, that I may discern between good and bad. For who is able to judge this, your so great a people? And the speech pleased the Lord that Solomon had asked this thing. And God said to him, Because you have asked this thing, and have not asked for yourself long life, neither have asked riches for yourself, nor have asked the life of your enemies, but have asked for yourself understanding to discern judgment, behold, I have done according to your words. Lo, I have given you a wise and understanding. H995. I have given you a wise and understanding heart, so that there was none like you before you, neither after you shall any arise like you. Read the entire context at unlockbiblemeaning.com. 
the deep significance of this discussion has evaded us. Here it is. Solomon wants to know how to govern the nation to benefit their prosperity in every way possible, including their mental health. We must meditate on God's gift to accomplish Solomon's desire, a wise and understanding heart. This is exactly what Nishama does. The inspiration, the Nishama, of the Almighty gives them understanding. That Strong's H995 in Job 32, verse 8. We've defined Nishama as consciousness, composed of five vital traits purpose, conduct, reasoning, socialization, and rulership. God gave Solomon the understanding of how to govern unconverted people, the nation of Israel, and by extension, all people, in these five domains so they benefit the most from life in this world. God poured out on Solomon the keys to mental health. He lived, experienced, and wrote profusely about purpose, conduct, reasoning, socialization, and rulership, and how to maintain optimum mental health for all humankind. 1 Kings chapter 4, verse 30. And Solomon's wisdom excelled the wisdom of all the children of the East Country. Sam's comment. Origin of Oriental philosophy, Buddhism, mindfulness, and other non-biblical practices. Solomon's wisdom excelled the wisdom of all the children of the East Country and all the wisdom of Egypt. And he spake three thousand proverbs, and his songs were a thousand and five. Wisdom Books and the Writings Solomon's Book of Proverbs contains about eight hundred proverbs, and we have the Song of Solomon. But most of his writing is not in the canon, the Bible. His writings are among the Wisdom Writings one of the three parts of the Bible, the writings, along with Torah and the prophets. Christ summed it up in Luke 22, verse 44. These are the words which I spake to you, while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled, which were written in the law of Moses, the Torah, the law, or the Pentateuch, and in the prophets, Nevi'im, and in the Psalms, the Kituvim, or the writings, concerning me. The writings also contain Ecclesiastes, wisdom for depression, Lamentations, wisdom for grief, Ruth, wisdom for racial issues, and Esther, wisdom about God's justice. The writings include the last books written in the Old Testament, Ezra, Nehemiah, and Chronicles. I want you to grasp that this section is the ultimate word of God for the unconverted. Understand that there are only two groups of people in this world. First, the converted. God's people who eat from the tree of life through the Holy Spirit. And second, the unconverted, all people not called at this time, who live in this world, who eat from the tree of good and evil, and who should do the good. Please comprehend the extent of the unconverted of this world. Those are the people for whom Solomon wrote the book of Proverbs, among others. The Ten Commandments in Exodus were for the twelve tribes in the desert. The Ten Commandments in Deuteronomy were for the twelve tribes in the Promised Land, 
with all the laws associated with the temple, sacrifices, ablutions, national and land laws, etc. The last books written, Proverbs and the Writings, were specifically for the twelve tribes dispersed after their captivities in Assyria and Babylon, and beyond that, for all people. Notice Solomon's prayer. I am but a little child. I know not to go out or to come in. 1 Kings 3 verse 7. Compare that with Proverbs 1 verse 8. My son, hear the instruction of your father, and forsake not the law of your mother. Solomon received the wisdom from his father as a child. Now, as a father, he's transmitting the wisdom to his children. Solomon's children, all people. Solomon had children, but the audience to whom he addresses Proverbs goes far beyond his own begotten family, his tribes, and even his nation. Proverbs are for all people. Meditate on these passages. Proverbs 1 verse 4. Whoso is simple, Sam's comment, all people. Whoso is simple, let him turn in here, as for him that wants understanding, she, that is wisdom, she says to him. Proverbs 8 verse 1. Does not wisdom cry, and understanding put forth her voice? She stands in the top of high places, by the way in the places of the paths. She cries at the gates, at the coming in, at the doors. Sam's comment. These proverbs call out from everywhere to everybody. To you, O men, I call. And my voice is to the sons of man, Sam's comment, and daughters, all people. Proverbs 8, verse 35. For whoso, Sam's comment, anyone, anywhere. For whoso finds me, finds life, Sam's comment, mental health, finds life, and shall obtain favor of the Lord. But he... Sam's comment, everyone, everywhere, but he that sins against me wrongs his own soul. Sam's comment, that's mental ill health, wrongs his own soul. All they that hate me love death. Proverbs 9, 3. She, that is wisdom, she has sent forth her maidens. She cries from the highest places of the city. Sam's comment. It's a call to all in the city. Whoso is simple, let him turn in here. The book of Proverbs and all the writings are not limited to Israelites or the Judeo-Christian Bible world. It is for all people worldwide who want mental health and to know how to deal with anxiety, depression, grief, race, God, justice, and many other daily aspects of life. These are the books of Bible psychology. The Ten Commandments in Proverbs for Everyone, Everywhere. The Ten Commandments are very much alive. The Ten Commandments are the wisdom of Proverbs calling from everywhere to everyone. Listen up. Here are the new Proverbs Ten Commandments. Exodus Deuteronomy Ten Commandments compared with the Proverbs Ten Commandments. The first commandment, You shall have no other gods before me. Proverbs 1 verse 7. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. The second commandment, you shall have no idols. Proverbs 12, 15. The way of a fool is right in his own eyes. Third commandment. 
You shall not take God's name in vain. Proverbs 30, verse 9. Lest I say, Who is the Lord? Or lest I take the name of my God in vain. Fourth commandment. Keep the Sabbath day holy. Proverbs 20, verse 26. It is a snare to the man who devours that which is holy. Fifth commandment. Honor your father and mother. Proverbs 6, verse 21. My son, keep your father's commandments and forsake not the law of your mother. The sixth commandment. You shall not kill. Proverbs 6, 16. Things the Lord hates. Hands that shed innocent blood. Seventh commandment. You shall not commit adultery. Proverbs 6, verse 32. But whoso commits adultery with a woman lacks understanding. He that does it destroys his own soul. Eighth commandment. You shall not steal. Proverbs 17 and 18. Stolen waters are sweet, but he knows not that the dead are there and that her guests are in the depths of hell. Ninth Commandment. Do not bear false witness. Proverbs 6.19. The Lord hates a false witness who speaks lies, and he that sows discord among brethren. The Tenth Commandment. You shall not covet. Proverbs 21, verse 26. The desire of the slothful kills him. He covets greedily all the day long. God gave and continually shouts the Ten Commandments from the pages of the Bible. Will we listen and benefit from mental health, or remain deaf fools and harvest mental ill health? Many books about psychology. Notice God's response to Solomon's request for wisdom. None like you before you, neither after you. God gave Solomon understanding. Biblical Hebrew meaning, among others, publish. Solomon, through the Bible, publishes the wisdom to reach mental health. And God's promise is, Nobody after him would improve on this wisdom. That's why Solomon ended his book, Ecclesiastes, this way. Ecclesiastes 12, verses 12 through 14. And further, by these, my son, be admonished. Of making many books there is no end, and much study is a weariness of the flesh. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. Psychology today spends billions studying the brain to determine what consciousness and mind are and how they work. Yes, they have found a few things, but psychology is empty-headed. It looks to books by Sigmund Freud, Carl Jung, and Jordan Peterson, and the list of psychologists and their books is endless. I'm not saying there isn't value in such thinkers and books. I am saying they don't hold a candle to the wisdom of Solomon and the writings on how to nurture and heal mental health. It's time for practical applied psychology from Proverbs, starting with the keeping of God's Ten Commandments, the whole duty of humans to nurture and heal minds. Join the free mini-course, just 20 minutes of video, to see the deeper God-intended meaning of Adam and Eve's nakedness. 
based on seven keys to master biblical Hebrew with no fuss. TheExplanation.com slash naked. Thanks for watching. Watch this video now of the next chapter of Transform Your Mind, Upgrade Your Life.